Distinguished guests and jury members, respected applicants, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the ICYF footage minutes short video contest 2020-2020 World Award Ceremony. This is Suhair Al Jahlani from Yemen, working as project expert in the International Project Department at the ICYF and Islamic Cooperation Youth Forum. It's really an honor for me to be with you today, moderating the award ceremony. At first, on behalf of ICYF President, His Excellency, Mr. Taha Ayhan, I would like to welcome all of you to this ceremony. This contest is organized in partnership with the respected institutions, Statistical, Economic and Social Research Training Center, CESREC, Research Center for Islamic History, Art and Culture, ERSICA, and Al Jazeera Media Network, TRT World, Islamic Risala Scout Association. The contest is first chapter of our main program of the Islamic Heritage, Intellectual Heritage, which was held last year, where ICYF invited experts to give sessions and enrich our youth with silent uh, knowledge of this topic. 
In fact, ICYF envisioned to implement such a contest in different series with different themes. The first series was the, this contest under the theme of the Islamic architecture. And the main uh, object of, objective of this contest is to explore the Islamic heritage and to highlight the significant implication for the investment of Islamic heritage through the eyes of the youth and to encourage them to represent the beauty and depth of Islamic legacies using their creativity and imagination by exhibiting the eminent features of our Islamic heritage. Now we shall move to our valuable speaker guests who wanted to send message to the youth of the world through this event. Let me start with the first speaker, uh, Mr. Muntasar Marai. And Mr. Muntasar is a journalist and manager of media initiatives at Al Jazeera Media Institute. Mr. Muntasar, the virtual floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum. I'm, I'm so glad to be like among my colleagues from like different uh, countries. It's always amazing, like still making like films, it, uh, it's videos, uh, short videos or documentaries or even fiction uh, uh, short films. Uh, it's always been my dream like to make uh, films that I couldn't be able. I've been able only to make it when I joined Al Jazeera. So please let me, before I start, to tell you a short story. When I, uh, I used to be a student at university, Al Jazeera has been launched in 1996. And when the first time I could be uh, uh, able to have a satellite at my home and to watch Al Jazeera, I had the same feeling of the first man landed on the moon, honestly, because I couldn't believe that you can uh, see such like uh, documentary films or like uh, uh, a freedom of expression on Al, Jazeera, on Al Jazeera because I don't I couldn't see it in my country because like in my country it's always been at the local TV the first headline is always about the president the second headline was also about the president and the third headline also about the president when I watch Al Jazeera Al Jazeera is always caring about people. The human being always in the center of Al Jazeera. So I start when I start watching stories about uh, people like me, normal people in uh, in different country of the world. I start watching myself. Then at some point I realized I exist. And this, and thanks for Al Jazeera because from that moment I had a dream like to join Al Jazeera and to make films to accept, to tell my stories, to reflect to reflect to tell other stories as well in my region. Because always it's, it has been same in the media before Al Jazeera. In the, you know, as the flow of, of information is always from the north, the rich, I mean geographically, culturally, not geographically, to the south. Why Al Jazeera came to, to, to shift the flow of information from the south to the north? Because always it's about who is setting the news agenda, who is telling our stories. Always like certain news agencies or a TV channels, they decide what's the news about us, what's how they can tell our stories, while I wanted to tell my own story. I want to make my own documentary film. So always the other side, our side of the story, it wasn't there. And I totally understand this because I'm Palestinian. And in the worldwide, you can see the other story is there. The narrative is there. But my story is not there. So Al Jazeera like become a great opportunity for me and also for many young filmmakers because we decided to empower young people to make films, to make uh, short videos. And now, especially with mobile, you can do everything. And we have a platform to empower people and give them that platform because they are the real heroes. We don't know as a journalist or a filmmakers do everything, but we open a space and then provide them with a platform to tell their own stories. So now with this great like contest, it's a great opportunity because as I said, like uh, watching your films, watching your story, it means you are exist. You are there. And it's not all, only about your stories, guys. It's all, only about your community, the people around you, that you look like them. You feel about their pain, their challenges, their dreams. And also at the same time, you can still reflect the culture, reflect the heritage, uh, reflect the emotions, the place. And I think like the good filmmaker and the good journalist who can be honest and professional, believe with the diversity, believe with the freedom of expression. Yes, we want to be exist on the map. We, want, we don't want to delete the others, 
because we believe with, with diversity, but it's great. When you make films, it means you are exist. You can tell the stories and the world will be more beautiful. So I'm like so grateful to, to be here today and to see like uh, many of my colleagues, they are making like uh, short videos in this uh, contents. And uh, I just would like to say that uh, uh, I'm here and also my colleague Mustafa, he has been in the jury, will be always open as much as we can to help like young people, young filmmakers, young journalists, as much as we can, so they can tell their own stories and uh, make their work much professional. Thank you very much. Thank you for IC, uh, YF and all our uh, partners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Montasar, for this wonderful remark. And our second speaker is Mr. Zia Ishanzada, who works as Senior Campaign Specialist at Tirite World Citizens. Mr. Zia, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum to all my uh, young colleagues and young friends, uh, to Mr. Marai from Al Jazeera, who I'm, I'm a big fan of. It's a, it's a great network, and uh, it's truly giving a voice to the voiceless. Uh, and it's an honor for me to be with you all. Uh, it's, it's like uh, my, my, Mr. Marai said, it's time to be involved in media. I myself, I'm uh, originally from Afghanistan, but I moved uh, to California when I was uh, just a little boy uh, with my family uh, as a refugee during the Soviet Afghan war. So I grew up in Los Angeles in the hub of entertainment industry and the hub of influencers and the hub of those who are are basically dictating the narrative of the world. So now we have uh, media organizations such as Al Jazeera, TRT, and some of the uh, uh, networks in, in places like um, Malaysia and others who are actually taking the grab of the narrative. It's like, you know, we have our own narrative. We don't need the West to always dictate to tell us what to what is and what isn't. We will tell our stories. So it is very important that uh, and, and actually refreshing to see your organization con uh, conducting such co uh, contests that will encourage the youth to be involved in media. We've come a long way, of course. One of the first things that it's important to, for, for us to know is our history. We are uh, catalysts indeed. Uh, the Muslims always been catalysts in arts and in, in entertainment and you know, uh, in, in new civilization, new technologies. You need it. It's just that we've been robbed from that for the last few hundred years, but our history speaks volume on, it, on itself. So we shouldn't forget that. So number one, going back to our history, what this uh, forum is trying to do, and remind us of our heritage, our rich heritage, Islamic heritage. And secondly, to be involved, to have the confidence, the courage to be involved. Um, like, I, I, at TRT World Citizen, uh, at TRT, we train young uh, refugees on uh, doing a three-day workshop under uh, a project called Journalism for Juniors. We train, uh, we train young high school students on how to tell their own stories, not to be told on, but they tell their own stories and the way they see uh, things. So it's a very successful program. We've been doing this uh, for two and a half, three years. We train over 3,000 students all over the world. Uh, so yeah, it's a great platform. In fact, uh, at TRT, we welcome some of you to get my contact uh, online or, or through um, the, the, the organizing committee uh, to reach out to us. We have a film competition each year, short film competition, when we encourage young folks to activate their creativity and to tell the story of people. How, like my, my, my good colleague from Al Jazeera said, we put human in the heart of the story and the same philosophy goes with TRT. When we put the humanity in the heart of the story, we care about humanity. Therefore, World Citizen exists for that reason. The, the World Citizen is the philanthropic arm of TRT. So for that reason, we have conducted this, this, this uh, uh, annual uh, film competition to encourage young folks to tell their own stories on uh, short films with certain criteria. In fact, we have, each year we get an average of 3,500 uh, films over 100, from over 100 countries. This year, we have opened a uh, TRT World um, Humanitarian Film Festival, which we'll, uh, we'll celebrate in Istanbul uh, in September of this year. Uh, but it's important uh, that we are involved in media. Like earlier, I said we've come a long way, 
when it comes to media it because a lot of times I, I grew up in the West. So I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, I've been living there all my life. I went to school there. I moved to Turkey just about three years ago. Uh, so in the West, if you're a minority, it is it is easy to get assimilated and, and kind of forget who you are and kind of go with the flow. But, uh, but also uh, sometimes our parents are with good intention. The intention might be good. They keep us down. They they say that no go do go to a career where it's like uh, benefiting financially, going to like professions such as doctors and physicians and and and, and lawyers, etc., engineers. It's good. It's noble. However, we we believe in an Islam that is comprehensive, that is covered the entire human uh, aspect, entire entire human sphere, but with ethics, with God in the center, God centric. We're God centric people. Therefore, whatever we do, it has to be ethical. So uh, it's not free fall. For us, it's important to be involved in media. It's very important and it's not haram. <laughs> and the West, they, they, they try to do uh, mention this, but it's also to be, it's important to be involved. And in, like I said, I'm very pleased to see uh, young folks from all over the world participating in such um, uh, uh, contests and programs and competitions and media, et cetera. Uh, as my colleague said earlier, uh, from Al Jazeera, that we cannot afford to be voiceless. We cannot afford to stay quiet and just be dictated on. We need to tell our story. We need young folks to tell our stories and their stories and how things are done. So it's it's beyond uh, beyond. Um, uh, 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 it's a life living beyond yourself. Beyond it's a, it's a cause bigger than yourself. So I, I salute the organization. I salute everybody who have participated in this in this project and those organizers for encouraging our young folks um, uh, to be um, involved and don't go deep. I think the narrative has changed to some extent in the West. People are participating in more media and films and, and fashion shows and fashion and music industry and influencing it in a positive way. So once again, I want to thank uh, the organizers for this wonderful opportunity to uh, for us to speak and bring everybody together. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to be in touch with the participants and also the organizers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dia, for this encouraging and interesting talk. Now, uh, next we will have Dr. Mohammed Hazima, the head of Directorate of International uh, Relations and Organizations at the Islamic Risala Scout uh, Association. Dr. Hazima, please, time is yours. Shukran laki, Yukh Zuhair. Bismillah. Salaamu Alaikum, dear brothers and sisters, competitors, esteemed jury members, administrative team, and last but not least, my fellow distinguished speakers. It is without a doubt a great honor to be able to address you today on this valuable occasion. For that, I would like to thank ICRF Secretariat and board and all fellow uh, organizers. He who does not thank the, cre the creature does not thank the creator, said Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. Based upon that, I feel it's my duty to recognize the efforts and initiatives demonstrated by ICOF president, board, and secretariat among the past years for the works which have been implemented and are being implemented and all futuristic implementations. These initiatives are shaping up the youth of the ummah with the aims of empowering talents and building self-confidence, yet encouraging initiatives while supporting the diversity, yet focusing on what brings us together and renouncing our different differences while respecting them. ICYF is raising youth awareness and inducing the social change that the youth can really make. All these efforts combined with the efforts being put from the youth in the OIC countries tend to create a unified youth language in the Ummah. For hand in hand, our countries can rise. United, we stand, divided, one by one, we shall fall. It is events like the one we have today that highlights our heritage and culture. Moreover, it truly really displays what a rich history we share and hold. Many nations and countries celebrate their, their achievements in the past decade or couple of decades, whereas we, as an Islamic Ummah, combined carry the achievements of 14 decades for the achievements in Bangladesh have benefited Djibouti, the successes in Gambia have positively affected Jordan, 
and the sunrise in Turkey has always been a dawn in Lebanon. Every mosque built and every Islamic cultural advancement has pushed our ummah and its individuals a step forward. Yet, any tree without uh, any tree, a tree branch without uh, its uh, roots or disconnected from its roots shall cease to grow once again. Many factors and interventions have seek to disconnect us from one another, to distort the image of Islam, Muslims, and the Islamic communities. The way to restore and maintain the sensitivity of it all is not by defense nor by violent offense. For Islam is much purer than that. To truly really demonstrate that, we must grasp from our heritage and demonstrate it globally. Our world of today has introduced so many distractions that our youth are no longer seeking or searching to learn their Islamic heritage or the legacy which they, have, they were blessed to be born with. It is the duty of each and every one of us to include this heritage in our educational systems. That does not have to mean, of course, that we enforce primitive Islamic study classes that many youth tend to grasp away from. Instead, uh, incentives like this awarding heritage in its short video contest could be quite a technique to deliver and encourage the heritage information gaining by our youth. For there is no language that has the power of touching the heart and teaching the mind as powerful as the power of art. I have had the honor of watching several works of the competitors in today's competition, even though I believe we, as well as every competitor, are winners with such a breathtaking, brain-feeding work and videos. Some works were bright to the extent of rewarding. Thank you very much for the jury members who were very professional and were faced with the task of having to choose the best of the best. To conclude, an idol of mine, a wise man, once said, the youth and students are the wealth of any society, and the society without its youth and students is an amputated society with no future. Once again, I would like to thank you all and good luck for everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed Hazima, for this precious speech. Uh, I would like now to invite uh, the president of ICYF, His Excellency, Mr. Taha Ayhan. Mr. Taha, the floor is all yours. Uh, dear sister uh, Suhaim, thank you very much uh, for your kind invitation. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, dear sisters and brothers, dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my warm greetings to the special guests of this wonderful ceremony, Mr. Mutasar Marai, manager of the media initiative of Al Jazeera Media Network, and Mr. Zia Ashan Zade, uh, senior campaign specialist in Internet and World, Mr. Mohammed Hazima, my love brother, uh, head of the Directorate of International Relations and uh, Foreign Affairs of Islamic Missile Scout Association, and uh, our guest of honor, His Excellency Mr. Neville Double Bay, uh, our uh, beloved elder brother, and also the Director General of the Sesu. Again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is my utmost pleasure and great honor to welcome you today in the award ceremony of the Islamic Heritage Village. And uh, I want to congratulate everyone who, who is making efforts to realize this opportunity and realize the occasion today. Dear sisters and brothers, it's so gratifying that lots of young brothers and sisters were very enthusiastic about this program and have contributed to it with their every time videos related to Islamic heritage from different parts of the world. Because the exploration of the Islamic heritage is a powerful resource for thinking about Islam as both historical and cultural heritage and treasure. Understanding Islamic history carries out significant implications for the investment of Islamic heritage, especially with regards to the emphasis on diverse range of powerful Islamic legacies. Also, understanding the Islamic heritage makes us brothers and sisters and, and strengthen our bonds between, our, between ourselves as a part of the Ummah. We, we Muslims proudly refer to our heritage, but, but Islamic heritage is, like any other heritage, very complex in nature. Is it a religious heritage, or a cultural one, or a civilization heritage? It should be noted that heritage could be traditional as well as racial. We hardly specify 
what we mean by Islamic heritage. Also, while talking about Islamic heritage, we are not talking only about the past, but we are also talking about the today and also future. While traditional heritage has its own importance and is as much as part of Islamic heritage, we have to emphasize our regional heritage, unfortunately. The Quran there is great emphasis on reason and knowledge, but in our traditional inheritance, reason has been used more as rationalizing what is dogmatic and as an instrument of critically examining the given issues at hand. Today, the appreciation of the Islamic legacy through its heritage is crucial than ever and is necessary towards imagining a better and much prosperous future. That's why our objectives in making this program were, first of all, encourage Muslim youth to represent the beauty and depth of Islamic legacies using creativity by themselves, by their own production. Also, one of other, our aim was promote youth awareness about Muslim intellectual contributions and their significance to Islamic heritage, encourage Muslim youth to recognize at the same time effort to reach past heritage. And also, one of the other aim of us in this program was empower youth to focus on identifying the Islamic history and culture which embrace a broad range of individual and collective experiences in addition to the many contributions to literature, math, science, art and history. And last but not least, the other aim of us to make our young people, our sisters and brothers, to feel that they're part of this huge legacy, they're part of this women, and to tackle the emotion of being alienated, being the other guy in the room. So I'm sure that we will watch amazing videos representing our Islamic belt today. So I would like to congratulate all participants and especially those who will receive awards, wish them success in their future lives and of this enthusiasm and love of Islam to shed light on their way. Excellencies, dear sisters and brothers, before completing my speech, I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who played a significant role in the successful realization of this magnificent program, especially our partners for their cooperation, our constants who eagerly participated in the program to introduce our Islamic heritage to the world, our jury members and all our teammates who have done their best for this wonderful occasion. I would like to say this opportunity to call on our youth, youth organizations and Islamic institutions to build more bridges of understanding, cooperation and partnerships on youth issues. And this program also proved that art and culture and Islamic heritage is one of the best ways to spread the message of Islam to all humanity. And I want to also test, express my special thanks to TRT World, to Al Jazeera, and Cecil for their huge contribution, as well as the Irsika for their huge contribution for this program. I pray to Allah Ta'ala to grant us success to accomplish our mission programs and projects and to help us serve the youth of the OIS and beyond. I wish we could organize this program and this project in person. Uh, but inshallah, after we defeat the COVID-19 pandemic, we would have more chances to organize so many programs in person. For the moment, we will continue to organize our projects and programs, unfortunately, virtual reality. I do believe through our solidarity and that action, our commitments will be amplified as reflections of the political will of those tirelessly striving to improve the conditions of youth throughout this world. By reiterating my profound thanks to you all, I pray to Allah the Almighty to grant us success in our new programs and projects which will certainly serve the youth of Ummah effectively. Please stay tuned for future ICW programs and initiatives. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Taha, for this significant message you directed to the youth. And I do believe that ICYF, under your wise leadership, will work hard to reach the largest number of young people through our programs and develop their capabilities and enable them to become successful uh, pioneers and influencers in their societies. Now, last but not least, we have His Excellency Mr. Nabil Dabu, the Director General of AccessRec. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. His Excellency Mr. Taha Ihan, President of Islamic Cooperation Youth Forum, ICYF. Distinguished participants, dear sisters and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good day to all of you. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to join you today. 
I'm delighted that CISRIC is a part of this awards ceremony of the ICYF's Heritage Minutes Short Videos Contest. I'm thankful to ICYF for inviting me to this celebration of the creativity and enthusiasm that Muslim youth have shown for their culture and heritage. ICYF, particularly His Excellency Mr. Taha Ilhan and his team have done a great job in organizing this contest and the award ceremony. I would like also to extend my appreciation to all the young Muslims who participated in this contest. Looking at the breadth and the scope of the submissions made for this contest has reaffirmed my trust in Muslims' youth potential to protect and promote Islamic heritage in the future. Distinguished participants, dear sisters and brothers, Islamic civilization is one of the oldest living civilizations in the world, bringing together a diverse set of people. Our collective history, culture, and heritage spans over centuries and across continents. In its 1,400 years, Islamic heritage and culture have had a rich past, a past that introduced innovative methods of governance based on the religious principles of fairness and justice. The past, which is popular with scientific and medical discoveries that are still re relevant today. These are the very discoveries that are the foundation up upon which the modern world has made unprecedented progress. In fact, Muslim scholars like Al Khawarizmi, Al Farabi, Nahayan, Nikhaldun, Ibn Sina, and countless others who laid the foundations for modern science and philosophy. Islamic heritage also carries, carries with it a lush legacy of urbanism and architecture. For almost a millennium, Islamic cities and cultural sites were some of the most impressive landmarks in the world. Cities such as Baghdad, Bukhara, Cordoba, Sfahan, Granada, Istanbul, Samara, and Samarkand were the centers of civilizations where language, arts, culture, and trade flourished. As a matter of fact, many of the capital cities of the uh, modern times, such as Damascus, Cairo, Baghdad, that were all established from scratch by Islamic rulers, are loaded for their urban ingenuity to this day. Architectural landmarks such as Mazar Sharif in Afghanistan, Suleimani Mosque in Istanbul, the citadel of Aleppo, the Taj Mahal in Agra, and the Great Mosque of Cordoba are living testaments to the artistic prowess of Muslims architects. These landmarks till date exude splendor that symbolizes Islamic culture at its peak. At the same time, they are also an ode to Islamic philosophy, nature, statistics, and religious symbolism. Since the very beginning, our heritage has emphasized the importance of the scholarly tradition of learning and teaching. That is unparalleled. The University of Karawin in Fas, Morocco, which was founded as a mosque by Fatima al-Fahri al Persia is the world's oldest and continually operational educational institution. Yet, even after having made numerous contributions to the advancements of mankind, Islamic heritage is not celebrated for its contributions to the world anymore. Today, Islamic culture and heritage is a victim of a smear campaign based on hatred, misconception, and xenophobia. People equate Islamic religious traditions and culture with violence and extremism, which is entirely misconstrued. And the most affected by this unfair, hateful campaign are our youth. Ladies and gentlemen, Muslim youth is the key to prosperous future of the Islamic world. Currently, Muslim youth from age 15 to 24 
make up for 28% of the world's total youth population. Islamic heritage belongs to all of these young Muslims. Yet, across the world, young, young Muslims, through no fault of their own, are relatively unaware of their rich historical heritage. This is because of multiple factors. For one, there is a clear lack of visibility, conscious and or unconscious of Islamic heritage, the cultural, artistic, and scientific achievements of the golden age of Islam. If you look closely, there is also an inherent prejudice against Islamic scholars and artists, fueled by racial and ethnic bias. But most importantly, modernization for all of its benefits is transforming cultural benefits, cultural beliefs and practices in the Muslim world, leading to the loss of cultural identity in Muslim youth. What should we do in the face of such challenges? My opinion is that we can tackle these challenges by empowering our young people. Muslim youth are agents of change. We know this. Our young people have the ability to be the protectors and the promoters of Islamic heritage. If we, if we provide our young people with the right opportunities to gain knowledge about their collective heritage and to openly celebrate their culture, they can promote tolerance and awareness. Tolerance and awareness are crucial for combating negative misconceptions about Islam today. Such opportunities will also enable them to reintroduce Islamic heritage in a positive way to the non-Islamic world, while simultaneously harmonizing modern thought with Islamic heritage so as to limit conflict and promote solidarity among civilizations. Most importantly, empowering young people can enable them to make valuable contributions to their heritage, culture, art, and science. Contributions similar to those made in the golden age of Islam. Dear sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, before concluding, I would like to say that I really hope that this contest will provide an additional momentum to empowering Muslim youth and reacquainting them with our plentiful heritage. I hope that specific contribution to this award ceremony can raise awareness on this important subject especially from the perspective of the OIC. I would like to assure you that CISRIC, as CISRIC, we will continue to support the efforts of ICYF towards promoting and enhancing the capacities of young people in OIC countries, as well as facilitating intra-OIC cooperation in this important area. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for this, for addressing such valuable and comprehensive message to the youth. Once again, I would like to uh, express my thankful to our valuable speakers and esteemed excellencies for their speech that shed the light on our youth and encourage them to continue giving to the advancement of reviving the Islamic heritage. Now, uh, I have with me the 10 candidates for the awards for today. We will move to the pivotal part of the ceremony right now. Let me uh, give first a brief of the process of the application and how did the evaluation and art of artworks and selection went. Actually, we have received over 100 applications from different regions in the globe from uh, youth. Uh, and we, could, we were happy that we could reach a big number of uh, youth and encourage them to participate in this contest from different uh, regions in the globe. Uh, they try to present the world to the world the beauty of the Islamic legacies uh, through their talents. Indeed, while watching these videos, we were very amazed with their talents shown in their artworks. The evaluation process was done by the esteemed respected jury members, which was formulated of five experts in this field, and they did such an amazing effort during the evaluation process. We will introduce our jury members later when we announce the winners. The evaluation was exciting to us because we were amazed with the job and talents and also creativity and proved that proved that the youth are able to make changes for the future. 
After the process of uh, the first evaluation, the jury came up with 10 shortlisted candidates that meet the ultimate criteria and standards of the contest. We wanted to share these videos with you and with the audience. In the meanwhile, we will start playing the videos for the 10 candidates, but I would like to highlight uh, one thing that we will ask our jury members to join a break room in order to discuss the winners while we are playing the uh, video of the 10 candidates. So I will ask my uh, colleague to take the jury members to the break room and we will start sharing with you, inshallah, the 10 uh, candidates' videos of the contest. Okay. Now, let me start with uh, the 10 candidates' videos. I will ask my colleague to start playing the videos. We have the first video that was made by Mr. Saleh Bagirho from Azerbaijan. There are hundreds of monuments of historical and cultural significance in Azerbaijan that are the carrier of the Islamic heritage. One of these monuments is the Surat Ali religious architectural complex located to the north of the Maiden Tower, Baku. The complex is surrounded on all sides by balconies and columns, reminiscent of Mecca, which is very sacred to Muslims. For centuries, Azerbaijan has been the land of religious tolerance, peaceful coexistence of representatives of different nationalities. The Surat Allah monument was a sacred place of old religions in the territory of Azerbaijan. When the complex was built, it was surrounded by Muslim mosques, Christian churches, Jewish synagogues, and places of worship for pagans. In ancient times, when Muslims, Christians, Jews, and pagans could not go to other holy places, they visited this complex, and it was of equal importance for visitors. The gravestones of the Islamic period are presented in the form of tombstones, shrines, rhinos, and horse gravestones. Tombstones, geometrical ornamental ornaments, decorated with various sophisticated compositions, demonstrated the details of the deceased. The Islamic tombstones are decorated with geometrical and floral ornamentals and content parts mentioned in the verses of Quran. Today, this historical and cultural complex functions as an open-air museum. Lori, capital of Kwara State in North Central Nigeria, home to almost a million people of diverse ethnic background, such as the Hausa Fulani, Yoruba and Nupe tribes. Although they are ethnically diverse, they have found a common ground religiously in Islam. Islam came to Ilori through Sheikh Soli Wijanta, a Fulani man popularly known as Sheikh Alimi. So he was able to win a lot of converts and then somewhere along the line, all of them agreed to live in an Islamic uh, society based on Islamic principles. Alimi did not come to Ilorin as Alimi. 
that title was given to him by the Muslim community in Ilani in recognition of his old erudition in Islam. Islam continued to make rapid growth in Ilani, such that in 1829, it became an emirate of the Sokoto Caliphate, and descendants of Sheikh Alimi have continued to occupy the seat. Years after, there was a need for bigger masjids to accommodate the growing population of Muslims, and the Ilori Central Masjid became part of the Islamic architecture the people look with pride. most beautiful mosque in Africa. Part of the Islamic practices introduced and passed down by early scholars were do dawah, open dawah. They added the second services to it, which is like communal services, like uh, uh, conducting marriage ceremony, uh, naming ceremony, that comply with Islamic penance. The other one I call the third leg is a corollary service to all this spiritual service prominent islamic scholars such as late sheikh adam abdullah ali lori and the rest defined the widely accepted islamic learning heritage in ilori sheikh kamali din al adabi changed the direction of teaching of islam in ilori because he was the one that introduced first learning by recognized curriculum Ilani has the highest concentration of Islamic and Arabic centers in Nigeria. Ilori is so rich in Islamic history and blessed with eminent scholars that it is fondly referred to as a place far from Jahannam and closer to Jannah. When we strive to become better than we are, everything around us becomes better too. Paula Coelho, The Alchemist Dear Mujiza, I always want you to be a better human, as good as our ancestors were. Do you want to know what they did today? I want to introduce you to the heritage site of Khalifatabad, the modern town of Bagirhat on the bank of the river Bhairab. Shad Gambuj Mosque, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is a part of the mosque city of Bagirhat. It was built by Khan Jahan Ali. He was the ruler of Khalifatabad. When he came, people were empty inside and out. He was a fighter, saint and builder. He founded townships, built mosques, madrasas and sarais, roads, highways and bridges, excavated a large number of ponds in the districts of Greater Jasor and Kulna. The Shait Gambuj Mosque is the most magnificent as well as the largest enclosed type mosque in Bengal. The name Shait Gambuj or 60 domes is misleading. It has as many as 81 domes, 70 circular domes upon the prayer hall, 7 Jogjala domes upon the central aisle and 4 domes upon the corner towers. The mosque has an oblong shaped prayer hall measuring externally 48.95 meters by 32.25 meters with a 2.43 meters thick surrounding brick wall. The hall is internally divided into seven bays and 11 aisles. The freestanding 60 pillars support the whole roof. It can be possible that the name of the mosque is derived 
not from the number of 77 domes, but the number of the supporting 60 pillars. Hence, it may be stated that the original name of the mosque was Shait Kamba Mosque, the tomb of Khan Jahan Ali. People love him. They received knowledge from him and converted to Islam. The spiritual light was spreading so fast in this land. Mujiza, my dear daughter, they are our ancestors. They served the land and won people's heart. is the Azan. But something is unusual about the Azan. Listen carefully to the first Azan, coming from the Sultan Ahmet Mosque. While the call to prayer echoes from the minarets of this beautiful mosque, the Muazin of the neighboring Hagia Sophia Mosque awaits his turn to recite the call to prayer. <laughs> this melodious duet of the Muslim call to prayer, the Azan, by the Sultan Ahmet Mosque and the Hagia Sophia Mosque, is something that is worth a listen. This practice is called Azan Makabala, it is a tradition that has continued in Istanbul, the capital city of the Ottoman Empire, for almost five centuries. In 1935, however, instead of a mosque, Hagia Sophia was converted into a museum. During that time, the voice of Hagia Sophia was left muted. But in 2012, after a decades-long silence, the azun from the minarets of Hagia Sophia has been called ever since. In order to understand the tradition of Azan Makabala between these two mosques, we need to go back to 1453, when Sultan Mehmed conquered Istanbul. On May 29, 1453, the Sultan ordered Hagia Sophia to be ready for the following Friday prayer. It was on a Tuesday when they entered the city. Within three days, Hagia Sophia was renovated and converted into a mosque. Sultan Mehmed started the tradition of Azun Makabala. Two Muazin, stationed within their own respective minarets between the mosques, took turns calling for prayer. The Sultan asked for this tradition to be followed. When Sultan Ahmed succeeded to the throne, Sultan Ahmed was a pious and modest Sultan. He decided to invest on the mosque in front of Hagia Sophia. The conditions were perfect. In 1609, he started the construction of the mosque. The mosque opened in June 1616. From the opposing minarets of the two mosques, Azuns echoed across Istanbul. The two mosques literally sang and danced together for 350 years. In the afternoon prayer calls, you can hear the duet of these two beautiful mosques, and you can witness their love yourself. of Islam is one that is rich with influences in almost every field. Throughout the civilizations of men, they have existed from the beginning of the world until now.
Architecture is one of the most easily recognizable aspects of this history, which makes it an integral part of our heritage and culture. Today, I will take you on a journey to Morocco. As we discover why this piece of architectural magnificence is considered the world's oldest university that continues to work and function, as it did when it was found hundreds of years ago. Hatima Al Fikri is credited as the founder of Al Karawi University, an institution that has evolved over the years from its humble beginnings into a hub of not only Islamic but secular and scientific education. Fatima Al Fekhri was the daughter of a rich merchant who settled in the first region, current day Morocco. Her contribution to the enlightenment and betterment of the Muslim youth cannot be ignored. The building that is now regarded as the oldest university in the world didn't exactly start out that way. When construction began, the intention of Fatima was to build a big mosque that could accommodate a large number of believers who were growing in number. The building has been an epicenter of Islamic knowledge and sciences, symbolizing a new dawn of not only the religion of Islam, but the region. The Guinness Book of Records and UNESCO have both accredited the university and supported the claim that it is the world's oldest university that is still operational. Famous names like Abdul Rahman, Ibn Khaldun, and even Pope Sylvester II got dedicated as this place. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as I did editing and researching the topic. In 1550, architect Mamar Sinan, upon the request of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, began the construction of one of the most intelligent architecture at its time, Suleimaniyya Jama. Back in the 16th century, there were no microphones, speakers, or acoustic amplifiers, as this seemed to be a challenge for Mamar Sinan when building a Jama that is 3,422 meters square and it will potentially host more than 5,000 worshippers. How possibly can everyone hear the Imam clearly? Simply build a jama that has its built-in amplifier. By building a 27 meter diameter dome, flanked by semi domes, assembled by jars facing to the inside, adopting simple Persian architecture style in the construction of the multiple mihrabs inside the jama, studying music and using the math of the golden ratio, Sinan was able to achieve clear amplified sound in every corner of the jama. Sinan paid attention to details beyond architecture. For instance, he designed the jama so it directs the sound to travel vertically instead of horizontally, a design that will enrich the spiritual experience of the worshipper. Prayer's voice would feel like traveling to the sky and coming from there. This acoustic treatment of the jama would provide the worshipper a special solitude experience, in other words, the solitude inside the building. Architect Sinan believed that God created the universe from two letters, Kaf and Nun. And these two letters are symbolic of great importance in the Holy Quran. However, what is meant here is the command B. And God is the architect and maker of the universe. Therefore, 
architect Sinan applied the science of acoustic treatment to heighten the connection between us and the greatest architect of all, Allah. The Istiqlal Mosque is a home for six religions in the country for more than 270 million people. This is the light philosophy of the largest mosque in Southeast Asia. At first glance, the mosque is neither modest nor extravagant. It is international, new formalist. Not only that, it is standing almost right across the old Catholic Church, but this grand mosque is designed by a Christian architect, Friedrich Silavan, whose main theme was Ketuhanan, or Divinity. This mosque was raised as a sign of appreciation for God's help in obtaining Indonesia's independence. Hence, its name is Teklang, meaning independence in Arabic. The mosque has five floors, symbolizing the five pillars of Islam, and stands as a symbol of Pancasila that confirms the fundamental teachings of Islam. Faith in God, humanity, unity, democracy, and social justice. Istiqlal was largely influenced by the tropical climate in Indonesia. The construction taking 17 years began in 1961. Architect Silavan looked for inspirational designs from such far places as Germany, Iran, and Egypt. He features plenty of traditional and modern architectural elements such as the dome, arches, and the central structure. The Silavan Dome the architect used the dimension of the dome as 45 meters in diameter, indicating 1945, the year of Indonesian independence. An imposing structure of massive mosque enough to hold more than 200,000 worshippers beneath the dizzying dome. More than just a place for worship, the mosque has become a symbol of religious tolerance in Indonesia. Although meant to be holy shrine an important location for pilgrimage of Indonesian Muslims, people of any faith can marvel at the mosque's immense beauty. هنا جامع الشيخ صفا الواقع في مدينة سور في ولاية ديار بكر التركية لا يعرف على وجه التحديد تاريخ إنشائه أنشئ من قبل الحاكم حسن الطويل بين عامي 54 و 400 و 1000 و 68 و 400 و 1000 بناء على طلب جد الشاه إسماعيل الصفوي جنيد الصفوي ما يميز هذا الجامعة هو مئذنته على ما يروى أنهم صنعوا فوقه غلافا 
يفوح منه روائح عطرة منذ قرابة خمسمائة عام وسر ذلك أن المئذنة قد بنيت بطين ممزوج بحمل سبعين بعيرا من أزكى الزهور ومن الجهة الخارجية لوحة مكونة من خمسة أسطر مكتوبة باللغة العربية كتبت من قبل المهندس أحمد الآمدي على الرغم من أن بناء المسجد بسيط إلا أنه يحتوي على كثير من الزخرفة لقد امتزج رائحة عشق أهل الصفاء مع عشق خالقهم حتى تدفق العشق مسكا وعبيرا من أصابعهم وامتد خلال كل هذه القرون حتى يومنا هذا المؤمن يفعل كل شيء على أحسن وجه لا سيما إمارة مساجد الله هنا كل ما يلفت النظر مكنون في الحديث النبوي من بنى بيتا لله بنى الله له بيتا في الجنة لقد كانت هذه الجهود كلها لغرض واحد هو نداء يحمل أزكى الروائح وأسمى المعاني حيا على الفلا The historic Kushumba Shahi Mosque is one of the magnificent examples of Muslim architectures in this subcontinent. It is believed that the mosque was built during the reign of Sultan Alauddin Hussein Shah as his name is inscribed in the engravings of the Mihrab. The Mihrabs are decorated with various geometric floral designs which are meticulously crafted with wonderful motives of Muslim architecture. Inside the mosque, there is a mezzanine platform at the northwest corner. The judge conducted the proceedings there. There is a wide lake in front of the mosque which is used for ablution. This 400-year-old building was once claimed by the Hindus to be their temple, but later some Arabic inscriptions indicated that it's a mosque. Looking at the design in such detail, one can understand how aesthetically pleasing they were at the time, how flawless their architectural prowess were. In this journey, there was another abandoned building near this mosque, and very surprisingly we found out that this is also a 300-year-old mosque. It is located at Tanapur village in Bogura Santaharu Buzila. Only three people can pray together at a time. According to many, it's the smallest mosque in the whole world. The mihrab in there is so small and cannot be seen from the outside. In this journey of discovering our heritage, we could only cover a little. 
but there are a lot to discover. These architectures carry the glorious history of the Muslims. It is our responsibility to establish our relationship with them, preserve them and pass them on to the future generations. there is a holy place to worship God, temple, church and mosques. Many fascinating stories are lying behind these religious places. This is a tale of Dayanga Mosque. Dayanga Mosque is one of the magnificent monuments built by Mughals during their governance in Indopak. Zabun Nisa was a nurse of Shah Jahan. Her infinite services for the emperor can't be forgotten. This majestic mosque was built in 1635 by Zabun Nisa. Verses from the Quran are embedded on the roof of the mosque. The mosque was well populated until the reign of Mughals. However, during Sikh rule, Muslims' royal monuments were wrecked. They heartlessly stole marble and other precious stones from the buildings. This mosque was being neglected as well. It is suitable to note here that Dayanga Mosque is situated near platform number 1 of Lahore railway station. The interior of the mosque is decorated with shiny marble. Initially, there were four minarets of the mosque, but now only two are left. To the left of this spectacular courtyard, an old fountain expands the beauty of the mosque. Even the fishes present in the fountain praises the Almighty God. Dayanga, also known as Zabun Nissa, was a nurse of Shah Jahan. Dayanga is an active mosque on the historical pages. Even today, the call to prayer resonates from the minarets of this mosque. the 10 candidates who are nominated for the awards and i would like to highlight that the order of displaying videos uh, does not reflect the winners or the ranking of the winners uh, actually we came now to the very interesting and excited moment as i myself yani I am sorry, I will have to finish my moderation. Um, this is the very interesting and exciting moment for all of us. And for all of us, we have 10 candidates and all of them are the winners. Uh, but at the end, the jury has made the decision to choose or select the five winners. Uh, during the announcement of the winners, uh, our respected jury members would like to share their valuable observations and deliver them to the applicants. Now we will start announcing the winners. We will start with the fifth place going up to the first place. 
Now, join me to know the winner of the fifth place. you and I would like now to give the floor to the jury member Dr. Aras Neftishi from Ersika. Dr. Aras is an architect specialist of the history of arts and architecture who is also associate professor in Istanbul Technic University Department of Architecture. Please Dr. Aras the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum for all uh, it's nice to meet all and uh, I am very glad to have a member to be a member of this uh, competition, and also I congratulate the winner of fifth uh, film uh, between pride and neglect. The film acquaints us with the uh, lesser known architectural styles of region in the east of Islamic world. It under underscores the importance for all peoples to preserve their architectural and cultural structures. Regardless of whether simple of advanced and transfer of their future generations. The narration is uh, constructed successfully in, in many respects and stands out especially for its conformity with the name with them and conveying of message of the message. The heritage focused upon the depicted with the necessary in deep details, highlights it, highlighting its historical and architectural characteristics. Features of this site, such as the river beside, beside it uh, that is used for ablution are shown. The social environment is reflected as well as with the clarity by means of interviews and views of the landscape. These aspects relating to heritage are is conformity with the main theme. Furthermore, the detailed comparative presentation of the well-preserved uh, state of Ksumba Mosque with the small mosque nearby failing into ruins aptly draws the attention to the concept of heritage preservation and thus reinforces uh, the transmission of the message. Focus of the bird's nest at the mosque entrance sets a beautiful visual rendering on their uh, linkage with the worship these places of the of other living beings from the closer architectural perspective it is seen that the mosque of distinct importance within the islamic uh, geography has also been reflected to the possible extent with its artistic features ornamental elements of the external and internal surfaces are shown and explained in detailed manner. In detailed manner. The inside structure and calligraphy works are also highlighted. Thanks for all. And congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Aras. Now Thank we will you. go to the winner for the fourth place.
ورحمه الله وبركاته First of all, I would like to thank ICYF for being chosen on the jury. This opportunity was an honor and pleasure to be able to interact with the works of such creative and interactive youth minds, especially when it comes down to art and Islamic heritage, such a combination touch the heart. I would like to thank all those who participated in this competition. Way to go for each and every one of you. It was a unique experience displaying and viewing the different mindset, work and Islamic heritage culture from these variety of countries. This is considered a unique important experience for the youth to have them dig in and present their heritage in an artistic way. On a personal level, it was an opportunity for getting to know different Islamic heritage and different mosques that I had maybe never heard of before. There are short films that were quite distinguished due to their quality filming and title that clearly conveyed the message perfectly. The film done by Mr. Fahd, which was ranked fourth, was distinguished because it used a new method through animation and conveyed the message in an interesting and unconventional way where we felt attractive while watching. The ceremony may only award the best of the best. This doesn't mean that the films that didn't win are not just as special. Some films might need a bit more work and could make it out there to win other awards as well. Once again, it has been a great honor and pleasure working alongside the jury and all, uh, sorry, and in contact with the participants and their work. All the best of wishes and thanks for all. Thank you, Mrs. Dana, for the valuable remarks. Now we will go for the third place. part of this wonderful jury. Uh, first of all, it was a really enjoyable experience for me to watch a lot of moves, movies from different countries and different cultures about Islamic architecture and Islamic heritage, and watch them also from different filmmakers' eyes. As a film director, I know exactly how it's hard and challenging to create a movie with a specific standard criteria and precise topic in just three minutes. Also, it, remind, it reminds me with my old days while studying cinema, I had a lot of assignments like that to create a movie or to tell a specific story in one minute only. So I know how it's hard and challenging. At the same time, I saw how all participants worked hard and did their best to try uh, to create an amazing movie. I just need to congrats all participants and tell them you all did a great job. And it was not easy to choose the winners at all. My best wishes for you all. Thanks for ICYF for creating this amazing film competition. And thanks for Mrs. Suhair, Mrs. Sheridan, and Mrs. Fadila for all their efforts and cooperation with us all the time. Uh, thanks also for Al Jazeera Media Institute and Mr. Muntasir for choosing me to be representative for them in this event. Now, regarding the third place winning film. The film talked about a famous mosque uh, we all know well and love it very much, which is Sulaymaniyah Mosque but it focused on a specific detail, detail and a very important thing unknown to most of people, which is a sound frequency properties inside the mosque and its relationship with the mosque's architecture. Moreover, the will use for the film soundtrack and music choices was amazing, plus choosing creative filming angles which shows us the creativity in Islamic architecture. At the same time, using a vlogging style in some scenes gave us a general youthful impression to the film. 
thanks everybody and congratulations uh, Saud Hifawi all the best يعطيك الف عافيه سعود مبروك Thank you very much, Mr. Mustafa, for these kind words and for your valuable remarks and feedback to the audience. Now, I know and feel that the remaining uh, candidates are feeling very excited to hear their names. Now, we will go to the second winner and... Dear distinguished speakers, respected jury members, and guests, first of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the ICYF organization team, particularly Dr. Fadila, Ms. Tuba Jaran, Ms. Suhair, for organizing this brilliant competition about Islamic heritage. It is a great honor for me to take part in. Secondly, I would like to thank all of the participants coming across the world who put an invaluable effort producing fascinating videos. I am very much impressed by the quality of the work, the creativity and the originality. But even more so, I am delighted to see such great interest in Islamic heritage. For me, watching the videos these young talents produced was absolutely fantastic. I loved hearing about these beautiful heritage sites, the ways in which they narrated their stories, the videos they filmed, the camera angles, and how creative they were in delivering their message. To be honest, now my bucket list has expanded a lot, and there are many places I'm looking very much forward to visit after watching these great short videos, inshallah, when the pandemic ends. About our second winner, brilliant Charmin Chaudhry. I, by the way, I saw how happy she is. For us, your short video was amazing due to several reasons. And I would like to state these to give an idea about what was our criteria when we chose the winners, which was quite hard, by the way, as there were a number of stars among you. Charmin's video was very creative. She narrated her story by bringing in her little daughter, conveying us her message that we need to raise our children, being aware of our magnificent heritage. And a kid who has not grown up in these places cannot be the heir to this culture and legacy. We loved the simplicity of the narration as well. In a short video like this, you have to be very simple and concise. So by the end of the video, the audience clearly knows what you wanted to say. In a way, you have to give enough details, but do not drown the viewer within them so the story flows smoothly. Another factor was that her visuals were great. Shermin showed us the side of the mosque from above and going inside presenting us with details. So nothing was visually repetitive. There were also other additional elements like Shermin praying, which flowed perfectly in the scenario. And for me, the most Sorry, I think my microphone was muted. So uh, it had a human touch or a personal element. Shermin blended the story of the mosque with an advice to her daughter, which was very heartwarming and beautiful. So I would like to finish my words by saying, I believe all of you have a great future ahead and you should definitely keep up with this absolutely great work. My sincere congratulations to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Ellis, for your kind words and for your valuable feedbacks. Now we came to the first place. And before announcing the first place, I would like to emphasize, and on behalf of uh, ICY president, that all the short listed candidates are winners, even though if they didn't give the awards, but at least they have presented a very good job and they did uh, made a very creative artworks. Now, let me uh, announce the first winner which will go to
let us now invite our jury members, Ms. Fatma Noor Zingin from CISRIC, who works as Senior Events and Communication Officers. Please, Ms. Fatma, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear Suhail. Excellences, respected jury members, dear contestants, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wish you all a very good day. First of all, I would like to thank ICYF for initiating this idea and providing a space, a creative space for young people to show us and all those who will be watching Islamic architecture from their own perspective. I was blessed to be a jury member at the Heritage Minutes short video contest, which provided me the privilege and also all my dear jury member colleagues of watching all the amazing work in advance, which at the same time was difficult because we had to select the finalists. I remember watching some of the videos maybe six or seven times in order to be you know, fair to all the work. Uh, I cannot admit the fact that some of the videos have touched my heart at first glance. And I was amazed with such great work. We have all learned many new things about places we already know, or we have even learned about some places from scratch. I appreciate the fact that how these videos would serve as visual material contributing to the promotion of the respective countries. However, as in all contests, we had some videos which were outstand outstanding in terms of quality, creativity, clarity, and the project as a whole. As you all know, we had to follow strict criteria while evaluating the videos. It was very hard to make that decision but at the end, we tried to catch those tiny details which distinguishes one work from the other. After a little background on the process, I would like to congratulate dear Pina Nabila Faizin, our first place winner. I can see how happy and excited you are over there. Her video had the very taste of simplicity, yet quality and clarity. As a person who had visited Istiklal Mosque before with a tour guide, I have to admit that I have learned much more with your video than during my visit to Indonesia. So uh, I like the way how it had a unique form of documentary, which gave us many details within three minutes with amazing shots and serenity. The flow of the video was very good. The information provided was very uh, educated. The voiceover was calm and clear. Also, the music uh, you chose for background, reflecting something from your own culture, was a great idea. So congratulations again, dear uh, Fina. Uh, dear young friends, uh, as all my other jury member colleagues have uh, highlighted, uh, it was really difficult for us to make this uh, decision, you know, and they, all the work was amazing. I would like to applaud all of you once again. Uh, I'm very proud with all the amazing work you put together. As we all know, movie making has the power to affect people's lives. We live a different life every time we watch a movie and we gain a new life experience. I'm confident that all young contestants will continue improving themselves every day and will serve as cultural ambassadors of the world. Before finishing my words, I would like to thank all jury members for the efforts they put in during the selection process. And my deep thanks and appreciation are also extended to all contestants for their time and efforts. And special thanks to dear colleagues at ITYF for the amazing work. Thanking you once again. I wish you all happy and healthy day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Fatma. And I would like to thank all the jury members for their kind and encouraging words and for their uh, valuable uh, feedbacks for the applicants, which they have to take into consideration, inshallah, for future uh, contests. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. And I would like to go back to the president of ICYF and give him the floor in order to congratulate the winners. Mr. Mr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh again. Uh, thank you very much, dear Mr. Suhail, for this amazing uh, moderation. Uh, and thank you very much for all the participants for their uh, patience and uh, participation. Uh, it, I think the job of the jury was the hardest part because uh, I had uh, watched all the videos and all of them were amazing, uh, influential, inspiring. Uh, and it's, it's also um, and strengthen my belief 
uh, to our young sisters and brothers. If we give them the opportunity, they make a masterpieces. So that's uh, this great again to uh, being a witness of uh, such a great pieces. Uh, by the way, I, I want to uh, share uh, this happy news that uh, we want to uh, continue our work with all of the, those award winners and also all the uh, almost all the participants uh, in our uncovered media platform uh, for encouraging their creativity and also make the uh, benefit uh, of their creativity for our all in mind. And uh, at, at last, uh, I would like to congratulate all the participants and especially those who received awards, uh, wish them success in their future lives and hope this enthusiasm and love of STEM to shed light on their way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I would also would like to give the floor to His Excellency, Dr. Nabil Dabur, who uh, congratulates the winners. Thank you very much. Uh, I really congratulate all the uh, young uh, brothers and sisters who really uh, applied for this contest and uh, congratulate especially the winners. Uh, as I said uh, at my uh, opening uh, remarks at the beginning that uh, really ICWF is dealing with the most important segment of our societies in the Muslim Ummah, the young people, the youth. And uh, we, we should always think of this segment of our society in the Muslim Ummah because they are really the future of the Muslim Ummah. So uh, in order to, uh, I mean, uh, invest in them, in the right way, I think we should first of all educate them on our heritage, in our uh, the golden age of Islam. So they should not never forget about it. So they should follow it. They should promote it. They should protect it, and they should celebrate it in the right and the positive way. Not only in the Muslim world, but also in the non-Islamic uh, world, the rest of the world. Uh, this is uh, an asset. Uh, I, I think I believe really that. Uh, if our young people, the youth of Muslim Ummah, uh, increase their knowledge about our history, about the golden age of Islam, so I, I'm sure that this will be an asset for them to build good the future for the Muslim Ummah. Uh, I would like to stop here and, and thank again the ICYF, His Excellency Brother Taha Ayhan, for this great job, uh, and, and also all the team there in ICYF. Uh, I thank you all once again and wish you really uh, a strong and good future for all our young people. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, I would like to remind all our audience and applicants, as I mentioned in the beginning, that we will have new additions of this contest in the near future, inshallah. So keep watch our website for the upcoming announcement of our programs. I cannot conclude without expressing our acknowledgement to those who had hand in making the program a success. I would like on behalf of ICYF President and ICYF Secretariat to thank our partners who cooperated with us to fulfill this program. As I would like to extend our gratitude to the prospective jury members who worked closely with us and have spent time and effort to achieve this mission. At the end, I would like also to extend our appreciation to all the applicants who spent time and effort to prepare the videos and apply for our contest. And I hope that they all have gained benefits from the comments and valuable feedbacks that highlight, was highlighted by the jury members to be them in mind for the future applications. At last, a special thanks to my colleagues working behind the scene who participated to make this work I complete too. So see you in our next edition, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. See you.